Okay, um, good morning guys. Look, we're going to do a short little video um, with these four video clips and then I'm going to be organizing that data for all the stuff that's been revealed. But I want to show you all something. This is the way everything I've taught you plays out right in front of your face. I mean, everything I've shown you, the right side up, upside down paradigm is the way to understand that you were born into a prison. The only way to see the prison, because this is you, is to do that. Because there is a right side up you and an upside down you, and you got to do this, and then you're able to see it. So, you know, take an image of the Virgin, turn it upside down, it's a dead sheep. And why would the why would the Virgin be a dead sheep? You have to start asking yourself some, you know, questions. Uh, when you look at the altar of St. Peter in the Vatican, why would the dead sheep, when you turn it upside down, be a vagina, the Virgin, get it? So... One way you're looking at an altar of a big dead sheep, you turn it upside down, it's a vagina. One way you're looking at an image of the virgin, you turn it upside down, it's a dead sheep. Starting to see the pattern here? This is consistent, goes on and on. I'm going to show you how it plays out in movies right in front of your face. How they mock you all day long. Isaiah, those that rule my people, mock them, says the Lord. Okay, now, here we go. I'm going to show you this snake pendant real quick. This is called the um, Orm Hoxon, a witch goddess right here. I just want to take Rihanna, and I'll put her right here. And Rihanna's got the devil on her crotch. The mouth of the devil is her vagina, which is a common theme. You know, the mouth of the serpent in the Vatican is a vagina. And here's the Orm Hoxon, witch pendant, or witch goddess. So her crotch is no different than Rihanna's. This makes a face, I, I. This is the mouth. And she's the snake goddess. But I want to show you, if I drop it down here and I color it in for you very quickly, it makes a jaguar. Uh, there's the green eye of the jaguar. There's the eyebrow. There's the ear. There's the top of the head. There's the other ear. This eye is closed. Let me show you something real quick. Let's see. Oh, let me try it from up here. Hang on. We're going to do... Or Moxon, Snake Witch. You know what? I'll just go this way. Y'all just stay with me. Here we go. Copy. Do a quick Google Images. Just yeah, bear with me for just a sec. Trying, I don't want to move too fast. I'll just make mistakes. Okay, the Or Moxon, Snake Witch. There it is. Look, see? So if I click on this, Bronze, Or Moxon, Celtic snake snake witch goddess. See, there's one eye open. Now, I don't know how many of you saw the new Jumanji movie, but the goal to win it to win and get out of the game is you had to put the other eye back on the Jaguar God. I don't know. And when they do it, if you saw the movie, uh, they go upside down and then they stick the eye back in. It's all the same. Well, if you know what I'm talking about, your your jaw's probably already on the ground. You're like. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's right. To get out of the game, to exit the game, kind of like us, to exit this reality or non-reality that you're trapped in, to exit it, you got to solve this. You got to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Okay, here we go. So there's the Arm Hoxon Celtic Snake, uh, uh, Celtic Snake Witch Goddess. One eye open. Okay, there you go. And you can see, you know, I've, it's all the same right here. We'll go back here, and I'll slide this down here and drop it right there. It's a jaguar with one eye open. And in the mouth of the jaguar is her, her vagina. Okay, so now let's go back here. And I, that's going to come into play in just a minute. I'm going to play about seven minutes of this video. I want to show you one more image real quick. Let's see. Let me just scroll through here very quickly. See if I can find it in here. You know what? I'll just type it into Google search. Okay. I'm down with my demons. There we go. Down with my demons. Okay. Now let me show you something. Right here. We'll just do this one. Okay. So that's an isotoxal star, by the way. A four-pointed star is called an isotoxal star. So is a three. Isotoxal means edge transitive. It means the same thing as rotating something upside down. Okay, so down with my demons, there 
on that shirt and is a it's like a thing that's you see it all over the place now you go to zoomy skate shop kids wear this stuff so here's the thing if you say hey i'm down with that that means you're good with it someone wants to say hey johnny you want to go skydive and i go hey i'm down with that let's go that's what it means so down with my demons means you're good with it so look look at the hand and look at the look at this hand with the black fingernails okay we're going to count the fingers here we're going to start with this thumb you know what? we'll start over here with this one one two three four five six seven eight nine so there's nine visible fingers because you can't see the thumb on the other side so there's nine fingers let's count the chain links one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven do you think that that's a coincidence that nine eleven is associated with that t-shirt down with my demons they had a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit revelation 9 11 and there's just an outward manifestation of society and what's going on i mean this is pervasive i mean just look at this look how look how much of this stuff is out there there's so much of it it's insane and i mean pay attention to the sharp fingernails though look at the sharp look at those fingernails pay attention to that so this stuff is pervasive i mean this is just one page this is all the same stuff guys all look at it this is it's pervasive okay i mean it is pervasive okay so now here we go now i want you to look at these uh two women they have these sticks with hands on the poles and the hands that are on the poles are identical to that that hand i just showed you that says down with my demons okay the reason I'm showing you this is because the Lord showed me something yesterday and my jaw unhinged. I knew that everything goes back to ancient Egypt because that's who enslaved God's people. You know, the children of Israel were slaves to Egypt and all their false gods. And then the Lord God said, I'm going to show everybody who I am and I'm going to lead everybody out of slavery in Egypt. And that's where we got the Passover with the blood of the lamb over the doorpost. And that was a foreshadowing of Christ that he would lead us out of slavery from our slave masters, which were the serpent race. That's why the Egyptians have the, you know, the serpents in their crowns. And that's why, you know, they wear those headdresses that make them look like a hooded cobra because they were the serpent people. It's a no brainer. OK, now what? let's watch these guys. And this is the women's march. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the women's march in Austin. And this is an InfoWar video that you can no longer get because the censorship has arrived. But let's go ahead and watch, and I want you all to listen. We're going to do six minutes of this video. Let's listen to what these women at the Women's March, by the way, they, they have vaginas as costumes on their chests. But listen to what they say. What brings you guys out here? Women. 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 So what are you guys? Women. Are you guys vaginas? Women. I want you I want you to look at what they're wearing on their hands. They're wearing gloves that have leopard skin because Okay, that's that's why I showed you the arm hawks on witch pendant because it's a leopard you know the orm hawks and witch pendant is a leopard with one eye open when i closed these women are wearing leopard skin gloves and they're but they're remember this remember this word their costume is a vagina okay because the whole host body system is a costume the whole thing it's a suit of lies okay behind behind that costume the spirit behind there is exactly that. It is just ready to pounce and kill. Material is what we are. Okay, wait, go back, listen. 
women. Source material is what we are. Source. Did you hear what she just said? Okay, let's take a minute. Did you hear what she just said? She said source material is what we are. She's exactly right. Exactly right. Now look at this hand that they have on like a broomstick. Look at the nails on it. Look at look at that. Look at the nails on it. Yeah, right here. You're looking at two demons. These are demons. You're looking at two demons and they are out mocking everybody. And watch, watch what they say. Source material? The source is where you come from. Oh, wow. We're the source. We're source material. We're where you come from. Wow, let's go back and let's look at those altars again. Where you come from. Boy, did they get that right. Look at that. Original sin. Because this altar in the Vatican that they worship, is the it's an altar showing original sin of the angels that got caught in a snare. And so these women are demonically taken. These are literally, you're looking at functioning, highly, perfectly functioning demons with the source data. They've got the right, their data is exactly right. They know exactly what they're saying. They're correct. They're completely and absolutely correct. Source material. Perfect. Perfect answer. And they're mocking everybody. Let's watch it again. Women! Are you guys vaginas? Women. Source material is what we are. Source material? The source is where you come from. Wow. Look at that. Now watch this. They keep tilting their head back, turning their heads upside down, and they're mocking everybody. Just keep watching. <laughs> I'm going to pause it there for a second. The reason they turned and they deliberately did that, they turned and they made an X with the two sticks. Female women, X chromosome. So that's why they did that. Now listen. I'm going to show you something here in just a second. I'm going to let this play for another minute. And then I'm going to show you something the Lord showed me last night. My jaw just about came off my face. I was like, I knew it. Exactly correct. It is perfectly correct. Let's watch. So what do the hands represent? What do the hands represent? Let me show you what the hands represent. That's what the hands represent. That's exactly what the hands represent. It's a girlfriend's touch, right? This poor girl has no clue what's going on. These are two demons mocking her. Look, there you go. See, look. It's a woman's touch, right? See the girl leg. Just, just look at this. She's turned upside down, and they're taking one of these hands. It's on a broomstick. It's a meant to be a hand of a demon, and she's rubbing her face, and she's upside down. There you go. There it is. And they have an upside-down triangle on them, representing their privates. These are demons. Oh my God, what are they doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh. Is this performance art? Would you say this is your guys' performance art? Would you say that it's our performance art? It kind of looks like it, but I'm not sure what your intentions are. Pure joy is our intention. That's the only intention. How 
How long did it take you to make your costumes? Since the beginning of time. That is a demon, folks. How long did it take you to make your costume? Since the beginning of time. Wow. Now listen, I told you, I got a Donald Trump. Okay, so that's that part. Now let me show you what the Lord showed me last night. I was like, Ugh. okay, this mystery I told you is solved. It is completely solved. Now I can just organize data and just prove it all day long over and over and over and over again. Watch. Okay, let me show you what the Lord showed me last night. Okay, let's see these women that are, they got their hands on the sticks. Let's see, where does that come from? Oh, wow, it comes from ancient Egypt. There you go. And it's the other side, you know, the Sitra Akra, the other side connecting. See the hand? Yep. Hand on a stick. There it is. And he's got the hand on the stick. Reaching over, touching him. No, and by the way, this represents a God and a human. So there, it's, it's just the craziest thing I've ever seen. I mean, this is just so insane that you couldn't even think it up. And I, I had to uh, reverse the image right here. That's why it says 928 reverse. This is the original image. I had to pop it off someone's thumbnail on a video. I tried to hunt it up. Couldn't find it in Google Images, but here you go. Watch this. There you go. Down with my demons, aren't they? Look, there you go. There you go. Wow. You got to be joking, right? You've got to. Look, look what, what's this guy wearing? What's this guy wearing? A leopard skin. Leopard skin. Leopard skin. Leopard skin. Stick with a hand. Stick with a hand. Uh, are you kidding me? How long did it take you to make your costumes? Since the beginning of time. She got that right. Exactly. Because the host body system is a costume. And that's the greatest trick. The greatest trick the devil pulled, that Lucifer pulled, is getting you to believe that life, that your life is really life when it's really death. You're dead. You're born dead. It's so crazy. It's, in, it's almost insane. But that Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead. He said, he said, arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead. You're dead in your sins. And uh, it's just, it's so profound. It's the paradox of all paradoxes. But there it is. Look, just proved it. Look, here's a leopard skin, leopard skin. Stick with the hand on it. Stick with the hand on it. Those are demons. How long did it take you to make your costume? Since the beginning of time. Should we open up uh should we open up e sword to reinforce what you already know? But we should reinforce it. Jesus said, Do not your own scriptures say you are gods, John ten. He was quoting Psalm eighty two, you are gods, you are all children of the most high, but you shall die like men, you shall fall like one of the princes. The beginning of of time is Genesis. How long did it take you to make your costume from the beginning of time? So Elohim, bunch of gods that are, you know, that got cast out. So God, it's the cumulative sum. So God's angels, magistrates created man in his own vain show, representative figure, especially an idol. And he created them male and female. There it is. Since the beginning of time. You got that right, girl. Okay, now let's move on. Let me do this so it, it's going to buffer for a while. Okay, now let me show you this. Anyone see the Batman and Superman movie where they fight it out? You know, man versus God. That's got a lot of stuff going on in there. <clears throat> if you watch the last scene where Lex Luthor is in jail and he's going, He's coming! He's coming! He goes ding 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 ding. I believe he does nine sets of eleven. Yep, nine sets of eleven dings. Uh, now watch this. So here's Lex Luthor talking to this woman that's a DA. Uh, she works in the government. She's like after him. She's she's uh, 
not going to go along with this nefarious plan. So this is what Lex Luthor says to this woman. Uh, you don't think dad would mind, do you, if I change just one thing in this room? Because he's in his dad's mansion and uh, she's there talking to him in that room. And so watch what watch what he changes. You don't think dad you don't think dad would mind, do you, if I change just one thing in this room? Watch. You don't think dad would mind, do you, if I change just just one thing in this room? Because that should be upside down. I... Now we know better now, don't we? That should be upside down. Look what you're looking at. Okay, he said that should be upside down. This, these are angels and demons, up, right side up and upside down. He said that should be upside down. Now listen to what he says. Wait, the devils don't come from hell beneath us, no. No, they come from the sky. And this isn't alluding to the whole Batman, uh, Superman theme. So anyway, now let me go back to... Let me go back to my Citra Accra folder and watch this. So there's that, there's that, there's that painting. And so you can see, look, there's the host of demons and there's the host of angels. In the, in, in the one I just showed you, it's reversed. It, you know, I, this is turned upside down from the movie. So there you go. I mean, you know, right side up, up, upside down. It's no different than Jesus telling Peter, you know, Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It's, it's literally no different. Now, here we go. Let's just keep going. Okay, this is called National Treasure. Now, I don't know how many people have seen this movie, but Nicolas Cage is on this, you know, major treasure hunt. To find the treasure of all treasures. Let me tell you what the treasure of all treasures is. Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will set you Eleuthero free. I'm going to use the words that are in the Bible because I want to drill it into your understanding. Again, do you think it was a mistake the night I got saved? My girlfriend's name is Eleuthera. Eleuthera. Do you think that was just some weird coincidence? That was the Lord letting me know your entire life's been the paradigm, Jonathan. You think it's an accident? I was falling out of the sky upside down with a company called Vampires. Do you think that's some coincidence? Yeah, like, okay. Anyway, so here we go. Let's do it again. He's looking for the greatest treasure of all. It's supposed to be the biggest, baddest treasure there is. So the movie's called National Treasure. And he's got a pipe in his pocket he's been carrying around. Uh, through this movie, and the name, the the pipe has a name. the The name of the pipe is Charlotte. Don't you think it's odd that a pipe has a name? My dad smoked a pipe. I used to buy him pipes for his birthday. You know, it's one of the kind of gifts I used to like to buy him. Uh, a couple of times, I bought him a meerschaum pipe. So he's carrying around a meerschaum pipe in his pocket, and the pipe has a name. It's Charlotte. Again. My greatest gift I've ever gotten was my freedom. My freedom in Christ was my greatest gift the night I got saved. The Bible says, what should it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? So my soul became free the night I got saved, and I became free even within this host body. Okay, here we go. Listen carefully. Could it really be that simple? Okay, I'm going to pause it right there. He says, could it really be that simple? The secret lies with Charlotte. That was one of the clues on his little adventure to try and find the treasure. The secret lies with Charlotte. Charlotte is a meerschaum pipe that's supposed to be a ship. If you watch the movie and you listen closely... Uh, he tells his dad, hey, I found Charlotte, the ship. is in, And so it's a Mirasham pipe that's called Charlotte, and it represents a ship that's a kingdom. Okay, watch this. 
Could it really be that simple? The secret lies with Charlotte. This is very phallic. So, could it really be that simple? The secret lies with Charlotte. So he puts the, the, the pipe in the slot. He puts the stem in to it, and he turns it upside down. And the door opens. No different than Matthew 16. Peter, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And the door opens, and I guess that's how I got saved. What did I tell you the night I got saved? Read the tags in the shirt. I was like, that doesn't make any sense, Lord. Some source of communicating with me. I threw the shirts down on the bed. It said 100% nylon. I said it out loud to the ceiling like I was Stephen in Braveheart. 100% nylon. That doesn't make any sense. Then I heard, turn it upside down. I turned it upside down. It said 100% no lion. Like a Texan would say, hey, no lion. And so when I said 100% no lion... And my whole body just went like a scene out of Star Trek. Okay, so you just saw the exact same thing in National Treasure. So he just put the key in. The secret lies with Charlotte. Okay, so he puts it in, he turns it upside down, and the door opens. I'm just going to skim through this so we don't get a bunch like a codec violation. Watch this. Okay, so the whole thing opens up. They walk in, they're freaking out. It's the treasure of all treasures. And then, look, this, his dad dusts this off. Oh, the all-seeing eye. There you go. And then this guy walks up to... A big green, blue green statue of man represents death. Strange looking goatee. This strange looking goat. It's a big bluish green man. There you go. Big bluish green man um, in uh, Egyptian Egyptology death. And so now they've unlocked this giant treasure and then he lights it up. And then look how it goes and how it goes up here and makes a cross. And then there's a way out. See, went, fired up, made a cross. And then it goes all the way across. It lights up the whole treasure. And then... They're able to go out the other side. What's what's the whole point of this? The secret lies with Charlotte. Could it really be that simple? To get the treasure of all treasures, could it really be that simple? You just turn it upside down. 100% no line. Hey, did you know Charlotte is a girl's name? The name of the pipe is called Charlotte. Did you know Charlotte's a girl's name? Sure, anyone that has heard the name Charlotte. You know that Charlotte is a girl's name, don't you? Okay, well, let me show you something about the name Charlotte. Could it really be that simple? Let's see. There we go. Okay, here we go. Charlotte name meaning. Okay. So, you know, this is the way the Lord leads me. There you go. Watch. Charlotte is a female given name, a female form of the name, Char, uh, male name, uh, Char Charlotte, a diminutive of Charles. It is a French origin meaning free man. Read it for yourself. There you go. So what is a female name meaning free man? Because you were caught in a female system. You turned it upside down. You turned it upside down. You became a free man. Could it really be that simple? 100% nylon. 100% no line. Told you. It's an, it's, it's. It's, this is so pervasive, so in your face. When you know who I know and you're privy to what I know, 
everything resolves itself, the whole world. The whole world resolves itself. You'll go, wow. So how did I show that to you? How did I know this? You know, there you go. There's Lex Luthor. Turn it upside down. Angels and demons. Here's this guy. Let's see. Could it really be that simple? Let's hear it again. Let's hear it. Could it really be that simple? Okay, so he's going to take this. It's a ship. He's, he told his dad, I found it. You know, Charlotte, it's a ship because it represents the ship of fools, which was us. And, uh, you know, it's, and I don't know if you guys know what a ship of fools is or where the ship of fools come from. A ship of fools is an allegory originating from book six of Plato's Republic about a ship with a dysfunctional crew. And then as you read what a ship of fools is and you understand it's that, you know, it is a perfect allegory of what we are and what we do. And I highly suggest that everybody goes and, you know what, let's just read it. Imagine then that a fleet or a ship in which there is a captain who is taller and stronger than any of the crew, but he is a little deaf and has similar infirmary, infirmity in sight, and his knowledge of navigation is not much better. The sailors are quarreling with one another about the steering. Everyone is of the opinion that he has the right to steer. You know, be your own master. Though he has never learned the art of navigation and cannot tell who taught him or where he learned and will further assert that it cannot be taught, they are ready to cut in pieces anyone who says to the contrary. They throng about the captain, begging and praying him to commit the helm to them. And if at any time they do not prevail, but others are preferred to them, they kill the others and throw them overboard. Having first chained up the noble captain's senses with drink or some narcotic drug, they... they mutiny and take possession of the ship and make free with the stores thus eating and drinking they proceed on their voyage in such a manner as that might be expected of them him who is of their partisan and cleverly aids them in their plot for getting the ship out of the captain's hands into their own whether by force or persuasion they compliment with the same sailor pilot able seaman and abuse the other sort of men whom they call good for nothing but that the true pilot must pay attention to the year and the sky and the stars and the winds and whatever else belongs to his art if he intends to really be qualified for the command of a ship. And he must, must, I'm sorry, and that he must and will be the steerer whether or not the people like it or not. The possibility of this union of authority with the steerer's art has never seriously entered into the thoughts or been made as a part of their calling. It's like us with God, guys. Now in the vessel, which are in a state of mutiny and by sailors who are mutineers, how will the true pilot be regarded? Will he not be called uh, by them a praetor, a stargazer, good for nothing? Daniel 12. And those that are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those that turn many to righteousness like the stars and the sense of blazing a star and it stars forever and ever. And it also says stargazer. Sorry, I had a little hiccup there. Say those that turn many to righteousness shall shine like the look, the stars forever and ever look. It's a prince star gazer. So it's a mockery, you know, the whole idea of a ship of fools is a is allegory is an allegory of all of us. We are that ship of fools that sailed off into stupid land, which is where we're at. Okay, so now let's go back. Okay, so Lex Luthor, turn it upside down. Okay, demons, turn your head upside down. Hold the demon hand on a stick and touch each other. Vaginas, since the beginning of time. Lex Luthor, oh, if I could change one thing, I would turn that upside down. Um, could it really be that simple? 
uh, the secret lies with Charlotte. Charlotte's a female. We're in a female uh, system. Uh, the, the energy, mother goddess, mother goddess, mother goddess. Could it really be that simple? You put that in and you turn it upside down and the name Charlotte means a free man. That's how I got set free. I don't know how anyone else can get set free since that's the way Jesus told Peter, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. All Everything always pans out perfectly. Have you noticed one thing about this channel? All the data always intersects perfectly. There's no, there's no issues. It always intersects perfectly. And one thing overlaps the other, overlaps the other, overlaps the other. Always. It's perfect. Okay, here we go. Perfect data. Perfect delivery of data. That's how you know it's the Lord. Okay, now, I'm going to show you this little scene from Truman Show. Now, the other day, the Lord told me to take a step of faith that I wasn't comfortable with taking. I didn't want to do it because I live in a very uh, tenuous situation right now. Y'all know the story with the house and, you know, the estate that the house that I rebuilt that was bought with my money that was stolen from me by my own dad stole over $300,000 from me. He used some of that money to purchase this piece of junk property, which I said I did not want. I said I don't want it. He said I, I tried to do it in a nice way. I told him, look, if you can get it for $60,000 and put twenty into it, it might be worth fixing up. Just think of what a piece of junk any house is that you could buy for $60,000. Just think about that. What a piece of junk any house would be that you bought for $60,000 that's in the premier school district in San Antonio. It's a piece of junk. So he ended up getting it for 60 years. So I was, I was forced into taking it. Otherwise, you know, it would have been just, yeah, it would have been the wrong thing to do, you know, just on a spiritual level. I told him, if you can get it for 60, I'll do it. If not, I don't want it. He got the house for 60, put 20 into it. I spent time, money, energy, for years fixing this place up. My dad died. He left my, this house in a state to my brother and my sister. And they are they are not of the same cloth that I'm of. And they threatened me that, well, I'll have you moved out by the end of the week uh, back in May, which forced me to move the shipping container out of here, but I replaced it with another one. The Lord told me, oh, Jonathan, I want you to put doors in both sides of this container. I'm like, why? The last time he told me to fix up a container, I had no idea what it meant, but it sure panned out to be obviously orchestrated by him because it ended up at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. The word Casimir means proclamation of peace. It means to take the glory from another king in battle. So the container that was in my yard that had Revelation 3.10 on it, that the Lord told me, you got to write Revelation 3.10 on it. I put big vinyl stickers on it, said Revelation 3.10. The Lord told me, before you put that container in your backyard, you got to put Revelation 3.10 on it, which I did. I didn't understand why. It means I'll keep you from the hour of testing. The day the guy showed up to pick up that container, one of the guys, the ground support guy, Jose, uh, he was going to go up the container and hook up one of the collars. I went up before him and wasps surrounded me. I had to jump down, get up there, kill him with spray. And then he asked me, Jonathan, did you did you kill all those wasps? I'm like, absolutely. I wouldn't send you up there otherwise. And then this guy looks at me and goes, Jonathan, we were in New Braunfels and we hit a tree with the boom of the crane. The whole sky. He went like this. The whole sky turned black with flying, stinging insects. Revelation 3.10, I'll keep you from the hour testing. So we're going to pick up a container that says Revelation 3.10, and I got a guy sitting there going, yeah, Jonathan, the whole sky turned black. People were running and screaming. I'm like, I went, what did you say? George, who was working here that day, thought I was going to fight the guy. He, George immediately turned and was like, uh-oh, because I went, what did you say? Because I almost couldn't comprehend that the guys that are picking up a container that says Revelation 3.10, I will keep you from the hour of testing. The Lord told me, you have to put it up, put that on there before you pick it up and put it in the backyard to convert it. That guy's going, the whole sky turned black. 
Oh, wow, that's Revelation 9. And the pit opened, and out of the pit there came smoke. And by reason of the smoke, the sun and the sky were darkened. The whole sky turned black. And out of the smoke came locusts with, with all these bees, Jonathan. They had to, I was like, I literally almost freaked. I got my cell phone out and just recorded right then and there. They set that container in the backyard. I fixed it up according to the Lord's specifications. I'm going to repost a video about what I did to that other container. And because this house was under siege and that container was under threat of being taken, someone uh, that at that point I had a relationship where I talked to maybe three, four times a year. That's about it, Michael Spear. Michael contacted me and said, Johnny, if you want to put your container up here in Grand Junction, Colorado, you're welcome to. And I said, well, thanks for the offer. I'll let you know if I need to. And sure enough, there is so much pressure being exerted on me by my family members and the estate that I was like, I got to get the container out of here. And so the Lord told me, send it to Grand Junction. And it went to the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. Okay, it's it. At the address is 154. The Lord told me, Jonathan, look up the meaning of one. Because one, 54. And I looked up the meaning of one, and it was the Lord your God is one. Shema, O Israel. It's a number that is stands by itself, and it is all-encompassing, encompassing every other number. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then the Lord told me, look, type in biblical meaning of 54. And I did. It took me to Isaiah 54. I'll show it to you right now. It took me to Isaiah 54, and when I read Isaiah 54, I just about came out of my, just freaked out. So I, I open up Isaiah 54, and I start reading it, and it's talking about seeing, O barren thou that didst not bear. This is about us being birthed into the new kingdom. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. That's what this system is, the married wife, saith the Lord. And then you go down, look, for the maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is a name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord has called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife of youth when thou wast refused, saith the Lord. For a fall, small moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. Okay, pay attention, folks. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment. That's all of us that got thrown out. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Look at this right here. For as the waters of Noah are unto me. Listen to me. The container ended up at the corner of Rainbow and Casimir. Okay, so, so as the waters of Noah are unto me. For I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, rainbow. So I have sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. By the way, the container is looking at the mountains and the hills. <clears throat> but my kindness shall not be removed from thee, neither shall my covenant of my peace be removed. Okay. That container is at the corner of Rainbow and Proclamation of Peace. That's what Casimir means. So, out of the one address in the United States of this, con this in the United States, the one address, the corner of Rainbow and Casimir, for the container that represents the New Jerusalem, the Bride of Christ, New Jerusalem City of Peace, for that thing to get picked up and shipped to Colorado, the Grand Junction, the Great Coming Together. Oh, that's what this is all about. I'm here to tell you we're all coming together, the Grand Junction, and the Lord has established an everlasting covenant of peace with those of us that have been called. What do you think the New Jerusalem means? New covenant of peace. New city of peace. Jerusalem. City of peace. So this is all so supernatural, it's hard to wrap your brain around it. I'm going to go repost one of the videos from the container just to remind you what happened. Because this is like a Old Testament biblical story. It's so wild. You talk about prophetic. You're at prophet, crazy, prophetic, mind-bogglingville. 
I am. I mean, I'm just like, how do you deal with all this? Okay. So now back to what I was saying. The Lord told me to take a step of faith and put two doors like the other one that went in. Two of them. This container opens on both ends. And I'm like, well, okay. And this guy called me from the door company. He quit working for it. His name's David. And David called me up and he said, hey, I can do it on the side. I don't work for the company. So, you know, I'll come by and talk to you. And sure enough, this guy called me and he came by and we talked about it and he made it so easy. I was like, okay, this has got to be the Lord. Things are just like falling into place so quickly. It's crazy. Instead of some long lead time on the door, the doors are going to be ready on the 17th. And I'm like, what? The Lord told me, do it. So I said, okay. So remember, I took the step of faith on the last container. This container has two doors. Think about that. Think about, why would you have me do a container that's got two doors? It sounds like one's getting ready to leave and like one's an exit, one's an entrance. I've never really been in a container that's got double doors on both sides. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, I'll do what you say. Now, here's, here's where the real, here's the miracle. As soon as I commit to what the Lord told me to do, I said, okay, David, let's do the doors. As soon as I committed to that, the Lord told me, watch the end scene for the Truman Show. Now, I saw the Truman Show a long time ago. And I was like, okay, watch, watch the, the final scene to the Truman Show. That's what the Lord told me to do. And I went, okay, so let's watch it together. Okay, so he's had to overcome his fear of, of water because when he was young, they, they instilled in him the fear of drowning because they didn't want him to try and leave the system that he was in. He was, his whole life was really a, you know, like a, a show, like a TV show. And there were cameras everywhere and they were, his whole life was videotaped every day of his life. It's called the Truman Show, which is like you and me. We're really in this system and it is, it's like a show. Now watch this. This is what the Lord told me to watch. The day that I committed to within 24 hours of committing to those doors. So here we go. Let's watch. I can turn the volume down so there's no real chance of a codec. Oh, uh, look. So he comes to the edge. And he walks to the end of the bone. Now watch. Now remember, lighting... In, in every scene, in every movie, there's a lighting crew. There's camera angles. They made sure that when he reached out and touched it, he touched his own shadow. And then when he gets out of the boat, watch. His own reflections walking with him. And then he gets to go out the door. Do you think the Lord's trying to tell me something? It's like, it's, like, it's time to go, Johnny. Watch the shadow come up. There it is. Look. Now he knows he's in a prison. He's figured it out. He took, he took the step of faith. He was willing to die, overcome his fear of death. He was willing to face it. He went out not knowing where he was going. He just like Abraham. He went out to do it. He runs into the wall. He's like, oh, it's a simulation. The whole damn thing's a simulation. Welcome to the world, folks. Now watch. Watch this. I'm going to turn the volume off. I don't want a codec violation. Okay, so here he is walking. Look. Look what you're looking at. Just look what you're looking at. Peter, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Upon this rock, I will found my church. What do you see? 
See his own reflection walking with him? His shadow look. There you go. And what's going on? He's getting ready to walk out. Stairs going up. Then they try and stop him. He walks up to the door. And then they try and stop him from leaving. It says exit on the door. In case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for the Lord to show me this after I commit to the... There he goes, out the door. Okay, so for the Lord to show me that within 24 hours of agreeing to what he told me to do to put two doors in another container, that would highly suggest to me that it's time to go. That it's coming. I want you to look at this one image right here. Right there. Look at that. Everything's right side up, upside down. This is by complete design, folks. See it? I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Right there. And then he, he's come to the end of it. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. We're coming to the end of all this. Otherwise, I wouldn't know this. I wouldn't know this. There's no way I would have this kind of knowledge. I just showed you Batman... Same thing. I just showed you these demons turning upside down, stroking themselves with these hands on a stick. It's like the other side reaching over and touching you. Just think of it as the other side, the Sitra Akra, kind of that realm of darkness touching you. Same thing in National Treasure. The secret lies with Charlotte. Could it really be that simple? You put the ship of fools in, you turn it upside down, and the door opens. The name Charlotte is a female name, but it means free man when you turn Charlotte upside down, like Eleuthera, Eleuthero. Wow. This is, so when I give you data, these data points, do you understand that the cumulative sum of the data points that I've given you, there is no possible odds that it could ever happen. There's just no way. My, the, my data points that are given to me by the Lord, they're impossible. And they're always perfect. And they add up. And they match the scriptures. Have I not said you are gods, but you shall die like men? You shall fall like one of the princes. Welcome to the fall. That's why I'm always falling out of the sky upside down. All right, guys. God bless. Now I'm going to work on data delivery, data delivery. There's so much stuff. It's like... Anyway, just wanted to give you guys this to encourage you. The end's coming. I guarantee you the end's coming. I guarantee it. And, you know, you want to be you want to be the bride of Christ. You want to be the new Jerusalem. And the only way to do it is you just, you got to turn the world upside down. You got to be able to see the kingdom. Okay? All right.